Okay, so just as we could produce a standing wave by having two transverse traveling waves traveling in opposite directions, which had the same amplitude and the same frequency, we can also produce a standing longitudinal wave by using two um, longitudinal waves of the same amplitude and frequency traveling in opposite directions. It's much harder to represent on the page and much more difficult to get your head around what's going on. But basically, here I have a, a medium in which longitudinal waves can pass. And what, what the longitudinal waves will do is they'll just kind of squish up the lines here and, and rarefy them as well. And in the middle here, we have the sum of the two individual longitudinal waves. So remember, the amplitude of a longitudinal wave is the amplitude of the horizontal vibrations of the individual particles represented by lines here. So as these waves travel toward one another, they will cause displacement in the medium, and they'll add up to form this yellow wave. They haven't yet superposed. So when they start to superpose, what we see is um, that they produce this pattern of nodes and antinodes. So we have a node here in the middle, and we have an antinode at either end where the vibrations, the horizontal vibrations of the particles are very large. So you should be able to see this. That at the two ends, the lines vibrate back and forth with a huge amplitude, whereas in the middle of the pipe, or in the middle of this medium, this white line here doesn't vibrate back and forth at all. So that yellow line is the, is the consequence of these two um, waves, longitudinal waves traveling in opposite directions and interfering. So we have a node in the middle and an antinode at either end. We're going to look a bit more carefully now at the types of harmonics that can be produced in a pipe when we have a standing wave happening. Um, okay. In the previous video, we saw that we can produce longitudinal standing waves with waves of equal amplitude, sort of longitudinal waves of equal amplitude and frequency traveling in opposite directions. And we're now going to explore the, um, the concept of a longitudinal standing wave a bit more carefully by looking at a, a sound produced in a, uh, a pipe of some kind. So this could be like a flute or a clarinet or an organ pipe, for example. And um, we'll have a look at the boundary conditions in this situation as well. So what we can see represented here is a pipe in, in which both sides of the pipe are open. Now. Um, the sound, so if, if we cause a disturbance at this left side of the pipe, we'll get a traveling um, sound wave traveling down to this other open end of the pipe. And sound waves do reflect off open ends of, of a pipe, strange though that might sound. And the reflected wave will interfere with the sound wave that's still traveling down, and they will set up a standing wave. Uh, now, the, um, the way that this sound this um, standing wave is produced is um, virtually identical to the way that we produce the standing wave in the string, except here we're dealing with um, particle motion that's in the same direction as the, the direction that the two individual waves are traveling. And um, we also have a different set of boundary conditions that we need to deal with. So if there's an open end of a pipe, then we must have an antinode at that end. If we have a closed end of a pipe, then that end of the pipe must be a node. And that leads to uh, a pattern of a harmonics that we're going to have a look at uh, now. So let's have a look first at what happens when we have both sides open. The first harmonic that, that can be produced is one where there's a node in the center of the pipe and an antinode at either end. Now, even though the particle motion is horizontal here, what we can do is represent the amplitude of motion of each particle. So this one here, for example, with a, with a kind of transverse representation. So 
the particles at this end of the pipe have a really large amplitude. The particles in the middle of the pipe have zero amplitude. They don't move at all. And the particles at this other open end also have a very large amplitude. This is the lowest harmonic. This is the first harmonic in an open, open pipe. I call it open, open because both ends of the pipe are open. Um, and it has a wavelength that is exactly twice the length of the pipe. This is similar to the, the guitar string. Um, the higher harmonics um, also have to satisfy the condition of having an antinode at either end. But in this case, we'll have more nodes in between, and we'll have an antinode in the middle as well. So in this case, we have, you can see here from this wave, that we have a full cosine wave in the pipe. So the pipe length is exactly one full wavelength. Sorry, yes, the pipe length is exactly one full wavelength, which means that the, the wavelength is halved and the frequency is doubled. So this is the second harmonic. We can similarly see that the third harmonic has a, a wavelength that is just one third of the original wavelength. So we therefore have um, three times the original frequency and so on for higher harmonics. Okay, now, in, in musical instruments, um, like a musical instrument like a flute um, can be represented by a situation like this where we have an open end at either side of the pipe. However, many instruments have a closed side. So a clarinet, for example, is better represented by this, and um, organ pipes typically um, are better represented by this as well. So. If we have a closed end, the standing wave must have a node at the closed end and an anti-node at the open end. Now this results in an asymmetry um, where we have a, a node at one end and an anti-node at the other. So we have a really large amplitude vib vibrations at the open end and no vibrations at the closed end. So in this situation, the longest wave that we can fit into the, into the pipe is when the wavelength is exactly four times the pipe length, or in other words, exactly a quarter of a wave fits into the pipe. That's the lowest um, standing wave, and that's the first harmonic. Now, if we increase to the next possible standing wave, so the next situation where we can have an antinode at one end and a node at the other, we see that that's actually now one, two, three quarters of a wave now fit into the pipe. The wavelength has, got, has dropped to a third of the first harmonic. Therefore, the frequency has tripled. And so there is no second harmonic when we have this asymmetry, when we have a, a closed end at one end and an open end at the other. So um, when this is the situation, we have only odd harmonics present because we have to have an odd number of quarter wavelengths fitting into the pipe. The first harmonic is one quarter wavelength. The next harmonic is the third harmonic, which is three quarter wavelengths in the pipe, which means that the wavelength has dropped to a third, which means that the frequency is triple. And we can see the same thing happen with the higher harmonics. That's the fifth harmonic, the seventh harmonic, the ninth harmonic, and so forth. And so, um, uh, this asymmetry is kind of um, the only situation where we need to be able to deal with that is with closed open pipes, but we need to be aware that that is the case. We don't get even harmonics in a closed open pipe.